Welcome, fellow comp legenders. Uh, Justin Ellis here, complegends.com. And we've got the PFL Weekly Challenge number 21, Partners in Crime. Here is the rundown to get right into Teams it. Teams of two for time, 20 in sync toes to bar, 50 burpees over the box, 24 20, 100 double unders each, 15 in sync toes to bar, 40 burpees over the box, 100 double unders each, 10 in sync toes to bar. 30 burpees over the box, 100 double unders each. All right, all right. All right. So, uh, as stated, you got the movements here toes to bar, burpees over the box, and double unders. And I want to make sure that we um, talk about the standards first. And so, the synchro toes to bar, the way we're going to put this is you have, you got to both complete rep one to move on to rep two. So, a perfect synchronicity. Is not required here, but you can't you can't get into a rhythm or a flow if you're not pretty much on on point. But if one and then the other, and you got to drop and then start another one, that's fine here. Burpees over the box. This is not burpee box jump over, so that is a little bit significant here that you can step or jump uh, to do this RX, and then double unders, two rotations per jump, and if you know there it's working at the same time so you don't have to wait for you both have to do 100 double unders total but you don't have to wait for your partner to complete they you can work over there and, and they can work over here so that is the gist and standards of this workout so um as always guys uh before we dive into all the tips and strategies here if you like what you hear and see and listen to follow like subscribe uh, just to help this channel continue move on with these workouts, these weekly workouts. And I will say we fell off just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to throw out there. We, me and my wife just had our first born son and we're pretty excited. We're learning all that stuff. So the last two, two weeks have been pretty crazy, but we are uh, getting on track. So we're going to see these workouts coming back. Um, so let's take a gander here at the workout partners and crime. And what is going to be your strategy to get this thing rolling? So, of course, if, if you're listening to this on the podcast, you can check us out on YouTube. And if you like written form and want to see it a little bit more on paper, uh, you can go to our blog or website, complexes.com. So, starting off with the Taylor's Bar, and, and we'll kind of look at this from round to round to round, and movement by movement. So, the Synchro Toes to Bar go from 20 to 15 to 10. Not a crazy amount of volume. Now, you don't get to split this up. So total, you're going to have 45 toes to bar, which tells me there's a sprint effort here. This is not somewhere closer to 80 to 100. Even if you're not great at toes to bar, um, this, is not, this is not extreme volume here. So in the partner relations to this, yes, you may have somebody that's really good at these toes to bar and someone that is uh, a little bit slower, not quite at your tempo or pace. That's okay, but it is gonna be significant. It's something you need to plan out. Now, I feel really comfortable with five at a time and pretty much jumping right back up. I, I could say I could do a 10 or 15 to start with and maybe even last a little bit with those 10s. I have to judge and, and value that time to burnout ratio basically and see if that's significant enough for me to continue on to that. But if you have a partner that's saying, hey, five is gonna be my limit, what's the point of pushing them outside of that? Uh, if they burn up now I'm not saying that there's not a reason to see how that third round goes and say look let's get up there and knock these out if we can hang on to it but uh, those double under are gonna factor into that and even the burpees are gonna factor into those shoulders later on so short and sweet has always been my motto now in, in a partner or team workout normally that means you get to break those reps up how you want this case you don't so there's an element maybe a compromise I want to go with 10 I, I feel really comfortable with five the other partner and maybe it's a six or seven, you know, and get to that last set. But if you're getting four sets in there anyway, you know, what's the point of potentially redlining it? And there's also some concept here is, yeah, I feel good. Let's start off with 10 and then maybe it's a five and five or a six and four allowing you to descend. And that only gives you three sets instead of four and to send those reps into a more comfortable scenario later on. The burpees over the box, like I stated earlier, can be um, jumping or stepping up. So this is the only piece of the workout that you get to break up with your partner completely. And I think you gotta take advantage of that. I still, both of you could be really good at burpees over the box, but there's probably still gonna be somebody a little bit stronger there. 
Something else to factor in is what comes after the burpees over the box, and that's the double unders. So I would really want to probably end with somebody that's better at double unders there with a small set. Maybe it's the last five reps, and that allows that better double under to do those last couple reps, let the other person get a five rep count for a little bit of a break, get those shoulders ready. They know they're going to have to break up those double unders a little bit more anyway. Why go into it at an elevated heart rate or a more elevated heart rate? So I would I would strategize around that factor because anybody can do burpees over the box. Yeah, somebody can go a little bit faster. But, you know, from the best to the mediocre, it's a couple reps, you know, as long as we're staying consistent on both ends. So, again, you can do a, a descending uh, rep scheme here. Uh, you do 10, I do 10 you know, and then drop it from there on out. I don't remember what the, the numbers would be. You know, if we go to eight and eight, that would be, uh, we're at 36 and now we have like a seven and seven to finish. Uh, so one rep pretty much less each set. But again, the speed of which you're doing this as a team, not as an individual, doesn't matter. It's a team effort here. So if you're saying I got to stick with my partner who's doing 10 right now, but I go at you know, RPMs uh, less, you know, those last three reps when I could tag my partner in who's going to pick those RPMs back up. Why wouldn't I take that as long as we can stick with the program? So I always look at the overall speed of the team, not necessarily the overall speed of the individual unless it's starting to drop. The uh, 100 double unders, like I said, coming off those burpee box jump overs, I think the, the idea here is to let the person that's better at double unders finish the set of burpees so they they're a little more confident going into those uh double unders ideally two to three sets i think if you're pretty good at double unders 50 is not a, a bad number to come out the gate you know i'm still trying to think about round two and round three so if i got to take a little bit of a shake off there to get ready for the next set cool um you start creeping into four and five sets that's where i think you're gonna start losing some time and the better double under here is going to get a little bit of rest compared to the person that's not. So be prepared to go into that next set of synchro toes to bar with a strategy. And if it's descending or fives, something very manageable. Yes, some team that can go up there and do 20 unbroken together is going to be ahead there. But hopefully you can make it up in, say, a good strategy on the burpees. And it's, it's the consistency throughout. They can come out and run and gun that first round. The, advantage, the little advantage they have is the numbers do go down, but can they maintain that? So I'm always looking for a very maintenance pace until that third and final round, which the burpees go down to 40. And then we get into the third round, it goes 10 and 30. So ideally, we're looking to increase those RPMs just a little bit by the third round. And what most people will see is they have really high RPMs in the beginning and then cl nowhere close in that third round. And that can be... A big issue as far as who's gonna finish this workout um, you know as always if you have any other tips and tricks as far as how you did this workout if you did it let me know what your scores were we'd love to highlight some of the efforts in these workouts from week to week uh, we'll get on a better schedule uh, moving forward as well so we apologize for that but enjoy just doing fitness and I think something it could be said to doing these online challenges the accountability factor a lot of us in a crossfit gym or in a group training facility need that accountability whether it's from our coach whether it's from um, the trainers around us and whatnot so this is just another way to be accountable you know you're gonna have to put this on the online and uh, people are gonna see it and you people want to perform they want to know what other people are doing too and that can push them a little bit to that next level of fitness as always, guys, check us out on all the platforms as far as uh, where you can get these workouts and some of the other stuff. We talked about uh, Legends, uh, the qualifier that just finished up, actually. So we'll be seeing the results here pretty soon. But uh, you can go to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Like and subscribe there so you can get all the updates of videos that aren't just the workouts. Uh, once we do have our full app ready to release, and you can sign up for that free account and start ranking within our system. And through our seasons, we'll be notifying everyone through our YouTube channel and, of course, our website at complegends.com. As you can see there, we had a couple workouts uh, for the Legends, and we're going to continue to do that, some of the bigger events, like talking about the workouts. So check us out on YouTube. Like and subscribe that. 
if you're online, uh, sorry, on podcasts. Of course, we're across a lot of different platforms there and uh, would love to have you there as well. Listen while you're driving. And once uh, the CrossFit Open starts coming around, we're going to be real involved there. One last thing I want to do on this uh, video here, and for those that are on podcasts, uh, you can check it out maybe later, but we are going to do a little product review. So I'm kind of curious of thoughts. And I found this product. This is a complete blind online product review. And uh, we used to do these with the old podcasts, and I always thought it was pretty fun to do, but never use the product. A lot of people find these things online first before they ever try them. So you may hear about this product first here on a CompLegends.com podcast. So let's take a look. We are looking at Stick Mobility, and this is on StickMobility.com. Um, I have no clue what this is all about. And if you're watching on YouTube, you're going to get a little more visual stimulus to what <laughs> this is all about. Um, so I don't endorse it necessarily because I have no clue and I've never used it. So we're just going to go based on what they're selling us online. So it's a three stick bundle and it's six foot, six foot and four foot bundle. They have other bundles, a seven, seven, five. So I, it, it, it states down here too. If you're under five ten, you need to get the six footers. If you're over five ten, you need to get the seven footers. Uh, a couple of pictures here if you're watching on YouTube it looks like they're stretching quite a bit or doing I mean they look like they're in a CrossFit box but uh, I'm okay I, I mean it looks more like stretching but of course these are just photos so I'm not real sure it's got a nice gripped handle here and they they are very flexible very bendy you can apparently get certified or find a stick mobility trainer take class they got videos let's check out a video Runners video, purchase videos, free workout videos. Let's take a look, guys. For those that are on YouTube, you're going to get to see what the stick mobility is all about. If you're not, check us out later. All right, bow and arrow drill fundamental series. So I don't believe you're going to get audio here. Um, you might get audio, but I'm just going to... Oops, didn't mean to do that. I'm just going to get this thing playing and see what we can get some visual here. So he's grabbing the handle with the vertical on the ground, hand in the middle of the stick. And again, if you're just listening, and imagine just a really flexible, what I would almost compare to as a, uh, a fishing rod, but really, really thick fishing rod. Got to watch how I say that. He's pushing, bending at the hip. I don't even know if I can honestly do this without throwing my back out now are they going for static here three to five seconds in the hold yeah so they're, they're calling them reps with holds and this is the bow and arrow drill for those that are watching he gets it extended I'm sure there's plenty of tension here but he's getting getting like a five. Well, he's getting a longer hold because he's going over it. But he said something about three to five. He's adjusting his feet, adjusting the distance. Okay. Um, I think just off the top right now, this is going to look a little more like um, somebody that's definitely in like maybe Pilates or yoga. Um, I, I think they're selling it as a full program. But I see kettlebells in the background and they got some pull up or some monkey bars. This is the monkey hang drill. So he's got two of them. So obviously it comes with three total. And they got two of the same long length. And now he's stretching into the back. Now he's rotating. Mm. I mean, obviously something like this you could do with a couple different items. Not necessarily you'd have to have these. But stretching into that bar like they did early on. I think if you're definitely looking for some body awareness and um, some stretching and mobility, this seems to be a pretty decent item. But I don't know if they're really separating me for, you know, why I couldn't do this with certain other items. Uh, let's see, what are those? shopping? Okay, so you can buy the individual stick for 50, stick bundles for 170. 
heavy stick bundles. I'm assuming that's just more tension. So I'd love to hear from anyone that may potentially have used this product. Um, if they have any, any thoughts and have used it. There's certifications, level one. I think that's pretty popular nowadays when, oh wow, $700 for a level one cert on their mobility stick. I guess you can implement it at a facility. And um, looks like they kind of have some gems like that. I think it's pretty popular. And I'm gonna probably be biased here a little bit, just owning a CrossFit gym and, and being up and running for eight plus years now. I feel like CrossFit definitely made that pretty popular. Um, creating a system and these are a little more niche, niche, sorry, uh, than than CrossFit, I guess. And so I, I try to be objective here, but again, I, I'm gonna be a little bit biased. Um, so yeah, guys, uh, stickmobility.com. Um, I don't know. It's not. I'm not a yoga stretch kind of guy. I need to be more, but this isn't the first thing I would think that would get me to that next uh, next level, or at least it might, but it's not going to keep my attention, I don't think. It's not expensive. I've seen a lot more expensive products than that, so I'm not saying that it's um, 170 bucks to get their full system and try it. I don't think... Um, you know, I think it's it probably might be worth it if you're into that. But a big part of any fitness is definitely, you know, finding something that catches your attention and, and sticks to you because it's, a, it's such a mental game. So anyway, guys, as always, um, check us out, complegends.com, on YouTube, on the podcast. We're going to start throwing in these online product reviews. And I must state, again, never use the product myself. So I'm not speaking on hands-on. But a lot of what we see nowadays is popping up in our Instagram, popping up in our Facebook is, is a pitch, and it, they're sometimes interesting. So I found this one to be somewhat interesting. I thought I might as well throw it out there. And what I'd really like to hear back is maybe from the folks at stickmobility.com or anyone that has the product, and let me know what you think about the product. All right, until next episode, uh, let's be legends.